For Complex News, I'm Pierce Simpson. It's hard to question Mega Stallion's place in the game. The Texas native has ascended to superstar status in many ways. With that success, many fans are anticipating Meg's debut album, Sugar. But over the weekend, Meg shed some light on a potential delay of that highly anticipated album. She took to Instagram Live to explain her current predicament. It seems that her label, 1501 Entertainment, is stopping her from releasing new music. I work for everything that I do. To try to stop me from working is really crazy. All I want to do is make music. All I want to do is put out music. 1501 Entertainment is a Houston-based record label that is ran by Carl Crawford. And yes, for sports fans out there, it is the same Carl Crawford that suited up for the Tampa Bay Rays, Boston Red Sox, and Los Angeles Dodgers. In December of 2010, Crawford inked a seven-year, $142 million contract with the Boston Red Sox. And according to Spider Rack, Crawford amassed nearly $180 million in his playing career. Now, mentioning his career earnings isn't simply the pocket watch, but it'll help construct the rest of the story between Meg, 1501, and Crawford. Back in 2018, Meg inked a deal with 1501 Entertainment, a production deal, in fact. That production deal was in conjunction with 300 Entertainment and Kevin Lyles, according to reports. In November of 2018, Meg had this to say about signing with 1501 Entertainment. The muff Houston hottie is coming to shut sh down. Thank you, Carl, at 1501 Certified Entertainment and Ferris at T. Ferris Money for sticking with me. Crawford reportedly worked closely with T. Ferris of Swisher House Records, the same T. Ferris name dropped by Paul Wall on 2004 Still Tipping. Even though things seemed great at first, Meg explained how there were subtleties in her contract that she might have missed. When I signed, I didn't really know what was in my contract. I was young, I think I was 20, and I didn't know everything that was in that contract. So when I got with Rock Nation, I got management, real management, real lawyers. And they was like, do you know this is in your contract? And I was like, oh damn, that's crazy. No, I didn't know. In September of 2019, Meg inked strictly a management deal with Rock Nation, even capturing the momentous occasion with a photo op with Hove himself. Rock Nation has been a major proponent for artists who are in tricky label situations and have jokingly been coined on social media as being the HR of rap. Rock Nation has been instrumental in assisting Lil Uzi Vert during his current label dilemma, as well as helping assist Meek Mill during his legal issues back in 2017 and 18. Meek Mill has been under Rock Nation management since 2012. The day after Meg's Instagram Live, she filed a formal lawsuit against 1501 Entertainment and its founder, Carl Crawford. Meg is hoping that a Texas judge would throw out her contract with 1501 Entertainment completely. In a lawsuit, she accuses the label of lying about what services it would provide, as well as not doing basic things like registering her songs with the Copyright Office. The lawsuit also provided insight on the breakdown of money. The suit claims that 1501 is entitled to earn 60% of the money she makes from her recordings, and of the 40% that is her share, Meg would be entitled to cover the cost of producing and making those records, well below industry standards according to the lawsuit. Also, the contract stated 1501 would get 30% of her tour revenue and 30% of the revenue from her merch. According to court documents, the label has allegedly only paid Meg $15,000 and has lacked in providing any sort of accounting. In Exhibit 1 of the lawsuit, Meg and her legal team broke down the numbers of her sales. Her total career sales and album equivalents is just shy of 1 million units and over 1 billion streams between Spotify and Apple Music. Those streams and units translates to roughly $7.3 million in revenue. While it seemed that the issue was simply between Meg and 1501, Houston rap mogul Jay Prince was also mentioned in the suit. Meg's manager at Rock Nation detailed the close relationship between Carl Crawford and Jay Prince. Around the time Megan signed with Rock Nation, Mr. Crawford associated himself with James Prince, known professionally as Jay Prince. Mr. Prince announced at the time that he was now Mr. Crawford's partner. I have been aware that Mr. Prince is notorious in the music business for threats and intimidation towards artists and others, and has been referred to as one of the most feared men in hip-hop. He has specifically made comments about Rock Nation's management of Megan and threats related thereto. The lawsuit references the Instagram picture between Prince and Carl Crawford that Megan's manager claims was a message aimed at Meg. At a time when loyalty is at an all-time low, it's nice to link with Jay Prince, who is steady teaching me how to move in this cutthroat industry. And I know that terrifies some, especially the ones who double-cross me. Hashtag paybacks a bitch. Hashtag 1501. Hashtag mob ties. Court documents claim that 1501 had something to do with the leak of her mugshot from a 2015 arrest that made its rounds on the internet last month. On Tuesday, March 3rd, a Texas federal judge granted a temporary restraining order filed by Meg and her team. The TRO outlined several key things. One, 1501 could not prevent the release of Meg's new record scheduled for the release date of March 6, 2020. Number two, 1501 is to refrain from threatening or posting any threatening or retaliatory social media posts or threats against Meg Thee Stallion. Number three, 1501 is to not intentionally falsify, alter, spoil, hide, transfer, or otherwise destroy any documents, evidence, or recordings related to Meg Thee Stallion in any way. 
The TRO allowing Meg to release music will only last until March 16th. On March 13th, a hearing will be had to determine whether that will be extended or not. On Tuesday, Carl Crawford spoke with Billboard in a lengthy interview that hoped to tell his side of the story. Rock Nation using that as a strong arm tactic so that I can renegotiate the contract. They're holding the money, and they haven't paid me since August. She's done over 15 shows. Y'all do the math. She gets 100000 a show. She owe me, and I haven't recouped almost $2 million that we spent on her, building her up so that Rock Nation will want to come around. Where was Rock Nation at when we was grinding and riding around on the back streets? Rock Nation was nowhere to be found. Carl also discussed Meg's claim of only receiving $15,000 from 1501 Entertainment. How she'd been paid $15,000? As soon as we signed the 300, I wrote her a check for $50,000, and it signed with her name on the check. We can show you the proof. That's another thing. I got all my receipts. They know it. I got all the receipts. We gave her a $10,000 advance when we first signed her and gave it to her mother. I don't know what happened. 300 gave us a $200,000 check when we first signed. I gave her 50,000 of it. I didn't even have to give her that. That was mine at the time. After Meg's TRO was granted by a Harris County judge on Tuesday, March 3rd, Carl Crawford immediately requested an emergency motion to dissolve that restraining order. However, the motion has not been ruled on by a judge. Sources close to the situation told Complex that March 6th was supposed to be Meg's album release date. On January 23rd of this year, 1501's attorney sent a letter to 300 saying that the making of the album was in direct contravention of 1501's contractual rights, as well as demanding that 300 cease all activity related to Megan's music until they get permission from 1501. Similar letters were sent to Puma and Live Nation as well. The plan now, the source says, is to put the album out on Friday as planned and, quote, deal with the situation as it unfolds, end quote. Megan confirmed this when she tweeted the album cover and track list for Sugar, along with the March 6th release date on Wednesday afternoon. Complex attained a copy of Megan Thee Stallion's original contract with 1501. Contrary to Crawford's claim in Billboard that Megan owns parts of her masters, the contract says that 1501 hereby is the owner from inception of each master recording, to the extent that the artist may be found to be the owner or author of any master recording. Artist hereby irrevocably assigns the company all of artists' rights in such master recording. For more on this situation, our very own Sean Stratara broke down some of the language in Megan Thee Stallion's 1501 contract that you can check out right now on Complex.com. As this story continues to unfold, also be sure to keep things locked to Complex News by subscribing to us on YouTube. For Complex News, I'm Pierce Simpson.